Okay, so we're going to look at reducing our answers with quadratic formula today. So how do you reduce? Well, you're going to pull out a GCF to create what we call a breakpoint, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's look at number one. Notice that this is um, 10. This is 10 plus or minus 8i. Now, this plus or minus right here, it joins that 10 and that 8 together. You cannot separate them out. So I know the temptation is to be like, oh, 2 and 8 I can reduce, and 2 and 10 I can reduce. Well, sort of, kind of, but you can't really do that. You've got to take a GCF out of everything on the top for this to work. So if I take a GCF of 2 out, I would have 5 plus or minus 4i over 2. Now what's happening is we're creating this little break point. This is that break point. So now it's like 2 times all that stuff, and I can reduce that way. So my final answer is 5 plus or minus 4i. So you can't just reduce the 2 unless you've factored it out. So let's look at number 2. Looks like I forgot the denominator. This is going to be over 10. All right, let's see. My GCF um, would be on the top. I would factor out, looks like a 5. So I would have 5 times 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 over 10. Now, I can't... Um, I can't mess with the threes, but I can reduce. The five will go into 10 and leave me two, right? So then my final answer would be three plus or minus the square root of three over two. So look at number three. Three plus or minus eight i squared to three over six. Now, there is no GCF in the numerator here. I don't see anything I can factor out of both terms. So that means I, I really can't reduce. So just keep that in mind. If there's no GCF across the top, it means no reducing. Now, don't be, don't be fooled. This 3 right here and this 6 right here do not reduce. You cannot mess with what's under the radical, so don't do that. Again, GCF across the top, if there's not one, that works with the bottom, then you don't reduce. That's it. Look at number four, negative three plus or minus nine. Now, notice there's not any radicals in here. There's nothing really to reduce. So I have whole numbers. So if there's no, if there's no radical, if there is no radical or there's no i involved, then you just solve it, just finish it. All right, what I mean by that? Well, I mean break it up, the plus and the minus. So I have negative 3 plus 9 over 3, and I have negative 3 minus 9 over 3, which would give me, what, 6 over 3, which is 2. So give me a solution of 2, 0. And this would give me negative 12 over 3, which is negative 4. So my solution would be negative 4, 0. So again, if there's no radical or no imaginary parts to it, then just finish it. Don't ever leave it like this, okay? Don't ever leave it like that. Now let's try solving this um, and practice this reducing when we can. Now remember, you don't always reduce. You can't always reduce. I just want you to have the tools to do it when you do encounter it. All right, so let's look at this one, number one. Now notice um, it's not in standard form. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get it in standard form so the question is, which way do I want to move things? Do I want to move these things over here, or do I want to move the 2x squared over here? You always want to have a lead positive. So that means I'm going to move all of this business over here, because I want to keep that 2x squared positive. So when I move those over, they're going to change signs. So 2x squared minus 4x plus 11 equals 0. Now I can put things into quadratic formula. So negative b will be 4 plus or minus b squared, negative b, or negative 4 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 11, all of it over 2a. All right, so I have 4 plus or minus. Now let's look at what's going on underneath our um, radical here. I have negative 4 
squared is positive 16 minus 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 11 is 88. So when I subtract, I get negative 72. So that means under the radical, I have a negative 72 over 4. Okay, now we know how to reduce this radical. Remember, we've done this before too. When I reduce that radical, I'm going to think about perfect squares. 72 is, um, I can take an i out to get the negative. And 72 is 36 times 2. That means I can take a 6 out, right? And leave the 2 underneath. That means I'm going to have 4 plus or minus 6i square roots of 2 over 4. Now I look to see, can I take a GCF across the top? Yes, I can. I could take a 2 out of both. So if I do that, I'll have 2 plus or minus 3i square roots of 2 over 4. Now, it doesn't completely eliminate the denominator, but it does reduce it. So now I'm going to have 2 plus or minus 3i square roots of 2 over 2. And there's my solutions. Let's try number 2. This is in standard form, so I can just jump right into quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all of it over 2 times a. So let's clean it up. Negative 10, oops, plus or minus, my bad, plus or minus square root, 10 squared, stop and think, this is what I'm thinking, okay, 10 squared is 100, 4 times 2, 22 is 88, so minus 88 gives me 12. All right, that's not so bad. So it's plus or minus the square root of 12, all of it over 2. All right, I need to reduce this. The square root of 12 is 4 times 2, or 3, so I can take a 2 out. So when I reduce, I get negative 10 plus or minus 2 square roots of 3 over 2. Then I ask myself, can I take a GCF across the top? I can. I can take a 2 out of both. That would leave me with negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. And now the denominator will reduce out. And I have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 3. And there are my two solutions. Let's try number 3, last one for today. Now notice it's not in standard form, and the x squared term is negative. That's yucky. We don't want that. So we're going to move everything to one side, and we're going to go this direction so that that 4x squared will become positive. All right, so when I move it, I get 4x squared plus 4x plus 3 equals 0. So now I do quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c, all of it over 2 times a. Okay, let's clean it up. Negative 4 plus or minus, um, let's see what's going on underneath the radical here. I've got 16 minus 16 times 3 is 48, which gives me a negative 32. Okay, we can handle this. So it's going to be a square root of negative 32 over 8. Okay, now negative 32 does clean up. Let's clean this up. So I can take an i out that takes the negative out. 32 is 16 times 2, so I can take that 2 out as a 4 and leave the 2 inside. So now I've got negative 4 plus or minus 4i square roots of 2 over 8. Now I think about reducing. Is there a GCF I can take across the top? Yes, I can take 4 out, and I have negative 1 plus or minus i square roots of 2 over 8. Now, I can continue reducing because 4 goes into 8 two times. That means my final answer would be negative 1 plus or minus i square roots of 2 over 2. All right, so I hope this has helped. You see how to reduce these guys. Just resist the temptation to reduce one or the other. 
if there's a plus or minus, they are like connected. You cannot just reduce one and not the other. So that's why I'm stressing to you, take a GCF out before you attempt reducing. If you can't do that, then you can't reduce it. I hope this makes sense and we will see you in class.